I have mixed feelings about this week's quote. It's another one that I've heard for a long time, but as with many of the others, I didn't really know where it originated. The quote I'm referring to is, the size of your dreams must exceed your current capacity to achieve them. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And this is attributed to Ellen Johnson Surley. Before we dive into this quote, if you haven't already, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial or upload. So like me, you've probably heard the second half of this quote before, the part with, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. But I'm willing to bet that like me, you assumed that this quote was from some business guru of some sort, but it wasn't. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was the 24th president of Liberia. In fact, she was the first female elected head of state in all of Africa. So I think she's qualified to make a statement like this. She clearly pursued dreams that probably scared the crap out of her. And I think the reason that I have mixed feelings about this quote is less about the intent and the content of the quote and more about how I see it used or maybe misused is a better term. So obviously the core of this quote is fantastic. I mean, if we aren't pursuing dreams that feel out of reach, then it's not really much to pursue, right? It's more just like a to-do list of, okay, I'm going to do this, check. I'm going to do this, check. It's not giving us that sense of ambition and dream and vision. It's not a big G goal. Those are little G goals. When we feel like we have the capacity or we know exactly how to achieve them, it's just a matter of following these steps. And there's nothing wrong with little G goals. There's nothing wrong with those to-do lists. We need them in order to achieve any of those bigger goals and dreams. But they have a very different purpose in our lives. And I think I'm glad that I used the word purpose. Actually, I wasn't sure what word I was going to grab there. But I think purpose is exactly the point, right? These big goals, these scary dreams provide us with a larger sense of purpose in our lives, a larger sense of meaning. And we all thrive on that purpose. We're all searching for it. Now, we may not all have large dreams to the extent of becoming a president or head of state or anything to that degree, but having a business and being the CEO, essentially, of our own business is a kind of a scary dream, especially when you think about what it takes to get there. If you're somebody who is working towards a larger, more like empire style business where you literally are the head of a company, that can be really scary because many of us as business owners have not managed other people. We haven't had other people relying on us and our business for their livelihood. In fact, a lot of us haven't even had our own livelihood reliant on our business just yet, because a lot of us are still employees elsewhere while we grow our business, which I fully stand behind. I do that as well because I don't want to put undue pressure on my business. But I think that this applies if you're a solopreneur as well for the reason I just said, right? If, if you're going to eventually retire yourself from the corporate world or being an employee, then that is kind of a scary dream to see yourself in a position one day where your livelihood rests completely on you and also on your ability to do certain things that may feel outside of your skill set. For business owners in particular, sales. There are a lot of people who are great at sales, but I would say that most of the business owners that I know and work with directly are a little bit more like me. We're what we would consider heart-led solopreneurs. We're focus on the service aspect, and we don't necessarily have the background or the skill set or certainly the comfort level that comes with sales. So that alone can make this dream of being a CEO, whether it's of a larger company or just for ourselves, scary because we have to step out of that comfort zone. And that's just in one area. That's just talking about sales. That's not even talking about if there are other areas of the business where you don't feel confident. For me, I do feel confident when it comes to the tech stuff and setting up email marketing and all that stuff, because that's what the rest of my channel is about. But I know a lot of business owners, especially heart-led service business owners, product sellers, who 
are not comfortable with any of that stuff. And so it can be scary to them to know that they need to get to a certain level of comfort with that in order to maintain and have this solopreneur business. Or they have to get into the scary zone of managing another person that they hire to take on those tasks. Either way, these are all things that are a little bit scary and where I feel like this quote is very applicable. I think the side of it that I don't like, though, is when it's coming from a mentor or in my experience, it was coming more from an upline in like the network marketing world. But I see it in other situations, too, where people are using this concept of fear to push a business owner or to push someone farther than they're ready to go. I know it's meant to be inspiration. I know it's meant to be motivation. I know it's meant to help somebody think bigger than themselves and to step out of their comfort zone. And I think that's great. But I feel like it starts to take on a little bit of a manipulative quality in that case. Not that I'm saying that's the goal of the person saying it. <laughs> I don't think it is in most cases. I think their intent is simply to motivate and inspire and help people achieve their dreams. But it can come off in a way that is too pushy. It can scare off a lot of people. It can push them to not just outside their comfort zone, but into a level of irresponsibility. And I think that's where I think this quote can be a little bit dangerous and can get taken out of context. It's interesting because I feel like when you tack on that first part where you're talking about having goals that you don't currently have the capacity to achieve implies that there is going to be a need to learn. There's going to be a need for training, for education, for being willing to put yourself in a situation of growth and not that you're just striving for something that you can't achieve and hoping that you get there. It implies very clearly that there's going to be work involved here. There's going to be a lot of effort. It's not just about having a scary dream and going for it. It's, it gives you more guidance as to how do you get there, right? What is the way to achieve that scary dream? It's through growing your capacity, which means learning. So that's kind of what I'm taking out of this quote. And I really like that juxtaposition of it. I think I've pro I may have used this quote before on a meme. I honestly don't remember. I've seen it so many times. It's highly possible that I did. But now I'm always going to connect the two together. Yes, I want to have goals and dreams that are scary and that push me and that make me grow, but also with the understanding that I don't have to do it alone. I can learn from other people. I can learn from mentors or teachers or YouTube videos, whatever it might be, to grow my capacity to a place where I am capable of achieving it. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. So is this First off, had you heard this quote before, had you heard it in its entirety or only the second half like I had, and does hearing the context of the entire quote change your perspective on this concept at all? Let me know in the comments.